Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at the weighted average cost of capital or WAC. This topic is covered in corporate finance or introduction to finance course, as well as the CPA BEC section. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures, as well as Excel tutorial. This is a list of all the courses that I cover. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, subscribe to the channel, put them in playlist. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people, share the wealth, and connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to, to supplement your finance, as well as your accounting courses, your CPA exam, CMA exam as well. And by the way, this topic also covered on the CMA exam. Let's start to talk about the weighted average cost of capital. I'm going to take you back to basic accounting, and this is going to help you tremendously in understanding this concept or this formula. Let's go back to the basic accounting equation. And if you remember, we state that assets equal to liabilities plus equity. Hopefully, you remember this much from the accountant equation. Now, we know that liabilities, it's the same word. We can substitute the liability with word debt because liabilities are debt. So in the finance language, they use the word debt. It's the same thing, plus equity. So far, so good. Now, also, we know that we have short-term debt and we have long-term debt. That's also we have that. And under equity, if you remember, equity is composed mainly of retained earnings, which is what the company earn and keeps, and common stock plus preferred stock. Mainly, there's, there are other equity, but they're not really a large component. So simply put, assets equal to that much. Now, if we value everything at market value, if we value the debt at market value, if you value the equity at market value, that's going to give us the value of the company. The value of the company equal to the value of the debt. So this is fair market value plus the fair market value of equity, right? If the if, if assets equal to debt plus equity, it means the, the value of the asset, the fair market value of the firm, of the asset of the firm, equal to the fair market value of the debt plus the fair market value plus fair market value of equity. This is how it works. Now, why is why is it why is it important to understand this? Here's why. Because we want to know how much what is our cost? What is our cost of debt? How much it's costing us to raise money? And what is our cost of equity? How much it's costing us to raise equity. Remember, equity, you have to pay dividend. There's a preferred stock cost, so on and so forth. So what's the cost and what's the cost of the debt and what's the cost of equity given the fair market value of debt and equity? And how do we find out the fair market value of the debt? We take the number of bonds times the market value of the debt, the stocks, the number of shares times the times the uh, mar market price of the stock. Now, we don't care about the short term debt because the short term debt is is basically valued at book value, so we don't worry about the short-term debt. So what we're left with is long-term debt, which is bonds, usually bonds and loans. And for equity, retained earning is internally generated. We don't have to worry about this. We have to worry about the cost of common stock and preferred stock. Now, how do we find the cost of equity and the cost of debt? I'm going to simplify it. Let's assume we have $100 of assets, of which 60 coming from debt and $40 coming from equity. This is a simple example, but this is going to help you once we get to the more advanced. What do we say? We say that the proportionate share of the assets that's coming from that is 60%. So if we take 60 divided by 100, it's equal to 60%. And 40 divided by 100 equal to 40%. So 100% of assets, 60% 60 of it coming from debt, 40% coming from equity. Let's take this simple step, simple example further before we go into the actual lesson. And if we look at, if we assume that for the debt, we have a cost of, let's make it uh, 6%. Yeah, it's 6%, it doesn't matter. Let's assume that the cost of debt, the cost of debt, is 6%. So we're going to take 60% times 6%. This is the cost of debt. And let's assume the cost of equity, it's going to be cost of equity is a little bit more because the equity has more risk. Let's assume it's 10%. 10%, that's the cost of equity. Let's go ahead and do the simplified computation without taking into account the tax deduction 
for the debt. So give me one second here. So if I take 0.6 times 0 0.06, my cost of debt is 0 0.036. Now this is going to be lower because eventually we're going to introduce the uh, tax deduction of um, interest for the debt, but that's we're not going to worry about this. And now we're going to take 0.4 times 0.1 and the cost of equity is 0 0.04 so 0 0.04 plus 0 0.036 we find out that the cost of equity for this company is 0 wait 7.6 or 0 0.076 or 7.6 percent what does that mean what does this whack mean it means the company will have to earn on their investments more than 7.6 percent again you're going to see later that this is the cost of that is cheaper because we're going to we, we're not taking into account the tax deduction we're going to look at it in a moment but the point is i'm just giving you the overall picture the 7.6 is the cost of financing this is what we call the hurdle rate so if the company wants to take any project they have to earn more than 7.6 if they earn more than 7.6 the value of the firm should increase the value of the stock should increase if they undertake any investment where the return is less than 7.6 then they're going to be in trouble in a sense that it's costing them more money than the cost of money think about it if you go to the bank and you borrow money at 7.6 percent you want to invest this money at something greater than 7.6 percent otherwise you are at a loss because you cannot even cover your cost so that's the idea that's why the weighted average cost of capital is very important once again it's lower than 7.6 because the cost of interest we're going to see shortly that it's it's tax deductible in other words it's less because you get a you get a tax break on your interest so let's go ahead and uh, look at the book and see what they're telling us now we're going to be using um, you know fancy finance language okay suppose a firm uses both debt and equity and mostly most firm uses debt and equity to finance its investments if the firm pays rb for its debt so this is the cost of debt rb the cost of debt and rs for the cost of the equity we don't know what they are now but this is going to be the percentage and the percentage of equity what is the overall uh, what's the overall or average cost of capital? Well, the cost of RS, as discussed in an earlier section, we talked about this, the cost of debt of the firm borrowing is RB, which we often observe by looking at the yield to maturity on the firm's debt. What is the, let's, let, let's, what's the cost of that? Simply put, if you borrow $1,000, and if you're paying ten hundred dollar in interest, your cost of debt is 10%. So basically, you'll take how much you are paying to, to, finance, your, to finance your debt, divided by the 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 amount of the loan so you could have you could have 15 different loans at the end of the day just tell me add up all your interest for the year all your interest for the year for those 15 loans is fifteen thousand dollar that's fine tell me what's the how much debt do you have in total i have two hundred and fifty thousand. well now i can find out what is your cost of debt how because if you paid fifteen thousand dollar in interest and you have $250,000 in loans outstanding, let me tell you, your cost of that is 6%. So this is how we find R subscript B, which is your cost of debt. So what we do is this. We find the proportion of stocks. Remember what we said. This is how much stocks you have divided by stocks plus bonds. So this is the total. So this is, think of this, what I showed you in the formula, because in, in finance books, they make it sound very like complicated. What this is, this is the assets, how much assets you have in total. And here we're taking the stocks. How much stocks do you have relative to your total assets and how much bonds or debt you have relative to your total assets? Because debt plus equity equal to assets. So this is the total. This is the total value. Then you multiply this percentage by your cost, which is by the percentage, and you multiply this by the percentage. Okay, The weights in the formula are respectively the proportion of the total value represented by how much stocks you have divided by stocks and bonds, and how much bonds you have divided by stocks and bonds. Now, for some companies, if they rely more on, for example, some companies, they might have capital structure of 70% in equity and 30% bonds. It means they rely more on equity than bonds. In some companies, it's the opposite. For example, they will have 70% bond and 30% equity, or the proportion could be 50-50. What is the optimal proportion? It depends on your company. It depends on your industry. It depends on the interest rate throughout the year. If, you, if the interest rate is low, let's think about 
about it. Nowadays, for example, in the U.S., the interest rate is low. Most companies, maybe they, re I'm not saying most companies, but they're more likely to rely on that. It doesn't mean this is the proportion these days. But what I'm saying is you are more likely to rely on that. Why? Because the cost of that is very, is very low. Therefore, you would finance yourself with that. Okay? And that's why we could have a bubble down the road bond bubble because companies are financing themselves through that but that's beside the point so this is what we are saying here now we're going to introduce the tax deductibility of debt debt because the interest that you pay on the debt is tax deductible so what happened is when you finance your company with debt your cost it's going to be lower why okay so interest is tax deductible it means you can deduct it on your taxes you you have a tax savings at the corporate level the after-tax cost effect of that so when you compute your cost of debt it is it is the uh, cost of debt times one minus the tax rate now the tax rate in the US now is 21 percent so let's go back to that example and show you how we apply this formula if I say the cost of debt the cost the cost of that here was 6%. I told you it's going to be lower than 6%. Why lower than 6%? We're going to take 6% and multiply it 1 minus the tax rate. Again, the tax rate in the U.S. is 21%. So what's going to happen is this. So I'm going to take 1, 1 minus 0 0.21. It's a, a 0 0.79 times 0 0.06. So you're through. Color. Okay, Daddy, I'm going to choose the green. Yeah. Okay. So what's going to happen my son wanted me to choose a different color sorry about that so the cost of uh, the cost of equity is 0 0.0474 as i told you it's lower it's 4.74 percent so notice again now we're going to take 4.74 plus uh, i'm sorry times sorry now this is 4.74 for uh, zero point let me just look at it one more time 4.74 4.74 i'm going to multiply this by 60 percent to find the true cost of capital uh, the cost of debt times 0 0.6 whoops times 0 0.6 0 0.0474 times 0 0.6 60 percent is finance in debt so notice my cost of debt is 2.844 2.8 four four percent so now it's 2.844 plus 0 0.04 as i told you it's 6.844 as i told you earlier that my cost of capital for this company is lower than 7.6 it's even 6.844 why because i was able to take an advantage of my interest my interest the six percent that i pay it's not really six percent it's 4.74 why because i have a tax deduction of 21 I have a tax deduction of 21%. And we're going to work another example. But remember that the cost of that, you will take the proportion, whatever you find out. I'm sorry, you, you will take the rate. Let's find the rate. Then you multiply it 1 minus the tax rate. In the U.S. now, the tax rate is 21%. Therefore, it's going to be lower. So if they told you the cost of that is 6% or the cost of that is 4%, well, it's going to be lower once you multiply it by 1 minus the tax rate. Now, the best way to illustrate this, as I said, is to work an example. Um, so let's take a look at this example to illustrate the concept and hopefully it will make sense how to compute this. Consider a firm whose debt has a market value of 40 million and whose stocks has a fair market value of 60 million. Simply very, very simply put, very similar to the capital structure that I had earlier. So the firm has 100 million in total, a 40 million in debt, and 60 million in in equity now this is easy this is that and this is equity well that represent 40 percent equity represents 60 percent so this is the weight the firm pays five percent of interest on the new debt and has a beta of 1.41 well i can immediately um figure out the debt the debt is 40 percent they pay five percent on it but remember they pay five percent but the tax rate is 21 percent so simply put the after tax rate let me find out the after tax rate for the debt if we take five percent times uh, 0 0.79 which is one minus 0 0.21 the, it's the 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 after tax rate is three point let me keep this open three point nine five so this is my this is my my the cost of debt 
they told me it's 5%. They told me it's 5%, but it's less than 5% because what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the 5% multiplied by 0.79. This is the after-tax rate. Um, I hope you understand what the after-tax rate is. Otherwise, go to my intermediate accounting and I will show you what after-tax rate is a little bit more in deep. So we find out your cost of debt. Now let's find the cost of equity. Well, here's what we are told. We are told sometimes the cost of equity is giving. Sometimes they tell you in, in a problem, the cost of equity is, let's assume, sometimes they tell you it's like 8%. Or sometimes what they do, they don't give you 8%. What they do is they gave you a bunch of a bunch of information. Like they're telling the beta is 1.41. If you don't know what the beta, go back and view the beta. The beta is 1.41. The corporate rate they're giving us, assume the security line uh, holds and the risk premium is 9.5 and the current treasury bill is 1%. 1, 1 so here's what we, we are giving enough information to find the cost of to find the cost of equity. We are giving beta. We need beta. We need the tax-free rate, uh, sorry, the uh, risk-free rate return, which is the treasury bill is 1% and we're given the premium. Now to find the cost of, to, to find the cost of equity, which is the cost of the 60%, we're going to take the risk-free rate, which is 1%, plus the risk premium, uh, the beta, which is 1.41 times the risk premium. And already telling us the risk premium is 9.5, which is RM, RM really is 10.5 minus 1% which is, which is 9.5, but kind of they did the computation all at once. So simply put, if we take 0 0.01, we, we take this formula and we solve it, we find out that the cost of equity is 14.4. Now we have everything. So we have 60%. First, we, we already completed this. Completed this. this is 40% times 0.395. This is the cost of debt. And the cost of equity is 60% times 0 0.1440, which is 10.22%. So the cost of capital for this company is 10.22%, which is what? Which is, is it high? Is it low? I don't know, but it's 10.22. So if you want to undertake any project, you want to make sure you earn greater than 10.22%. And this is the computation again, showing, showing it to you in a different way. 40 million times 4% times the rate but remember the cost of debt you'll have to make the adjustment you will take the cost of the debt times one minus the tax rate and it's now 21 percent in the us so the true the true cost is 3.95 uh, the cost of equity is 60 million times 60 percent which is which will give you um, the cost of equity we computed as 14.4, 8.64 together 10.22. So hopefully this will help you to compute the weighted average cost of capital. Once again, if you don't understand how the after after that cost you know work, please look at my intermediate accounting, specifically discontinued operation. I explained this concept much, much more in details. As always, I would like to remind you to visit my website for additional resources, especially if you're studying for your CPA or CMA exam, or if you are taking a corporate finance course. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe, especially during those coronavirus.